Welcome to I Communicate on Full Service Radio, 830 WCRN. To join the conversation, call 508-871-7000. Now, here's your host, Mark Altman. A happy afternoon, everybody. I'm Mark Altman, and welcome to the Mindset Go radio show. I communicate. Uh, this radio show, what we try to do is we talk about communication challenges in the workplace, at home, in school, in any aspect of your life. Regardless of what age you are, we all have communication challenges. And so uh, this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, when we get on the Mindset Go radio show, we try to talk about uh, solutions and processes and strategies and templates to really have difficult conversations and problem solve. And uh, thrilled to be back here on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, if you'd like to call into the show at any point, please call in 508-871-7000. And without Further ado, I'd like to introduce my partner in crime, Ted. Ted, how the hell are you? Uh, let me check. Woohoo! Real good. Now that's the Ted I've come to know and love. That's <laughs> what I like to see in the enthusiasm. Thank you, thank you so much. So, Ted, you know, I know every time I, I come to the station, there's always a mystery of what the show's going to be about today. Would you like to know what it's going to be about? No, no, no. Leave it a mystery. <laughs> Somebody call in 508. 508- 871-7000, and see if you can reveal the mystery. I love it. I love it. So, Ted, we're going to talk today about templates. Templates. Life templates. What a great concept. And, and here's what got me thinking about it, is uh, we just saw what happened with uh, the football player Antonio Brown that came to the Patriots yeah. and got himself in trouble. And this is not a referendum on whether Antonio Brown was guilty or innocent. No, I'm not going to get no, into any of that. No. But what what... What occurred to me is I had a colleague say to me, isn't it amazing how much money he blew because he couldn't control himself? Right. $30 million. Actually, that was at the peak. $30 million was what he was going to be paid this season with the Raiders. And what it got me thinking of is how many times, Ted, do we see a celebrity, an athlete, a musician, someone who has seemingly... Mm. everything at their fingertips, all the money, the fame, the glory, the attention, but then they just do something we call stupid. Yeah, yeah that's pretty stupid. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so we wonder why. Why Why would you ever, quote, unquote, blow the opportunity, blow the chance to earn that money? Why would you do that? Well, you know, people for centuries have been jeopardizing their everlasting lives for 20 minutes of pleasure. And as disgusting as that sounds, it's a regular thing in the human condition. It reminds me of that famous quote from President William Jefferson Clinton. Huh. <laughs> did not have sexual relations with that woman. I did not. <laughs> so here's, here's what it comes down to. I was watching uh, a special on ESPN. They do these 30 for 30 documentaries. Yeah, yeah. And there was one on Dennis Rodman. And what got me thinking about templates in a, related to Antonio Brown and Dennis Rodman is Dennis Rodman in this special, people that knew him growing up reveal that his life template as a child, that what he grew up around, was he was such a quirky oddball that he didn't fit into any group, any clique. He was an outsider. And the quote was, Ted, that someone who knew him really well, they said he was such an outsider that he didn't fit into the freaks, the geeks, the jocks, the nerds, right. the burnouts, nothing. And so I think about whatever template you experience as a child, that's what the show is about today, how that imp impacts your adulthood. How it yeah. impacts your ability to function, your mental health, your emotional health, how it impacts relationships. Oh, absolutely. I came home from grammar school, got beat up by a guy I thought was my best friend, and my mother said, well, Ted, you never can tell what people will do. Oh, my God. Ted, that is vintage because in that moment, and, and see, you're talking about something there that I didn't even think about, the impact in the template that sentences, interactions, influences can have. So when your mother says that, she's basically putting out to the world, whether you processed it this way or not, I don't know, but who can you trust? Well, that's, that's very good because I said to her, but why did he do it? 
And she said, Ted, you don't know because he only has the example that was set for him. So what did you take from that? So I said your take would have been, who can I trust? But then she turned it around as a positive learning experience. So what was your ultimate take? Can you remember back then what you were thinking? Oh, yeah. I I stopped the bawling and realized that it was on me, Mm. that I should have been looking for it. Wow. So kid beats you up. Your best friend beats you up. Well, I had been over to this kid's house, and it was kind of a dysfunctional situation, and the dad was always yelling, and the mom was always cowering, and, you know, I should have known. So, but, but the fact of the matter is, we start with, you get beat up, you don't understand why you're beat up, the potential messages you take from that experience are, you can't trust anybody, it might be my fault, and on the flip side... You can't control other people. They have their own challenges. Three three totally different kinds of messages yeah, there. Yeah. And well, so- wait a minute. Marcus Aurelius. If we can just accept that we can only control the things that are within us and not the things that are outside of us, everybody would have a much better life. Well, that's true. But what I'm really trying to accomplish on the show for our listeners today is I want... I want people to listen to the show today, and I'm hoping it stimulates some new awarenesses about how certain behaviors you grew up with, how certain influences you grew up with, and then reflect on, look at yourself today, and how is that really correlated with how you behave and interact today? You can only behave in in the same way as the example that was set for you. That's right. A different kind of modeling. So the template. The template is what you're talking about. Yep. It's, you know... uh, I remember uh, back in uh, when I entered graduate school and they told me I had to write a thesis when I was done. I thought, oh, I got a great idea. I'm going to write a how-to manual for everybody who has a child. And it would be, you know, how to take care of an infant, how to take care of a child, how to take... And then when you give the how-to book to the adult... Now they have a manual of life, and you make notes in it for what you went through. And I got laughed out of the room. Like, who, who's gonna who's gonna read a book about raising children or giving them an example of what to do? Uh, you know, of course, my whole life was built on that by my you know my well, mom and dad. But but let me say something to you. Here here's where my digressing for a moment. Here's where my quandary is. Anytime there are books written, how-to books, self-improvement books, things like that, I'm torn because on the surface, they're valuable, right? They're good. They're helpful. It could be. But there's nothing in life that can be treated as template-based and generic. Right. So if I pick up the book, if I have teenagers and I pick up how to raise teenagers, yeah, I could follow along in the general premise, but everybody's different. Every kid's different. Everybody's different. You're right. And so, you know, what I was thinking is that when you look at, and I'm going to use the example you just brought up. So let's say you're in a household where your parents are in conflict. Okay. Now, I, I'm not even going to go down the road of they're arguing, they're yelling. It's, it's very obvious. If they're obviously in conflict, there's a whole host of problems that go with that. But what I think about is... How does that affect a child on the surface when you grow up with parents in conflict? Well, there's three things that happen in my mind. One, it, it affects your belief in relationships. Because if you're exposed to people in conflict, you think that's what relationships look like. Agreed? Absolutely. Right? The second thing I think when you see parents in conflict is you could grow, grow up thinking that all conflict is bad. And I don't believe all conflict no, is no. bad. Without conflict, there's no change. Right? So, and then the third thing that I think happens is it creates a lot of stress and anxiety, and it ramps up your heightened sensitivity to stress and anxiety since you've been exposed to, and I don't want to necessarily go down the word trauma, but I mean, let's face it, it absolutely could be trauma. You know, this this uh, hits on something that's very deep in all human psychology, and that is fight or flight. Yep. And if a kid grows up in an environment like that and doesn't know what to do, 
when they're 40 years old and they get into a situation, they're not going to know what to do and they're going to freeze like deer in the headlights. Well, and, and I think that's a great point. And, and one of the things when I do, when I work with companies and we talk about confidence, one of the points I often make about confidence is when you lose confidence, it's really hard to get it back, mm. right? And so when, when you have a parent, um, and I'm sure your mom was an amazing mom. I'm just trying to give an example. But when you have a parent that's, that says something and your perception is, well, it's on me, that can pave a road where you take things personally when any situations, and it's very tough to reverse trends like oh, that. Oh, sure, yeah. Right? But taking personal responsibility for the things that happen to us is a great way to build self-esteem. Because, I, I mean, well, you know me off the air, and, you know, there's very few things that bother me. Very few things can get under my skin. And, you know, they're mostly people that are related to me of course but you know uh, <laughs> you know but but it did it did give me a certain sense of personal responsibility and um, I'm happy with it so Ted I I know we have to go into our first break momentarily but I just I, I want to I made a realization this week about relationships and communication and here's what it is that there are three components to self-improvement habit change, whatever you want to call it. Component number one is self... Oh, I love the background music. That was a nice touch. <laughs> it was almost like a bedtime story. I was uh, going to get into some kind of soliloquy there, Ted. Next time I won't turn it off. That's okay. So the first the first component is, if you're listening to the show today and you're thinking to yourself, what it, what was the influence my parents had that have affecting is affecting the way I'm parenting today? First component is you got to be aware of what it is what template, what habits you picked up, that's the first one. And then part of the first one is, if you become aware, do you care, right? Yeah, I see where you're going. The second piece is asking for help. Do you feel comfortable asking for help? If you have that realization, you think it's hurting your relationship or yourself, can you ask for help? Will that represent vulnerability or weakness or whatever? And then the third piece is, who the heck do you ask for help yeah, from? Yeah, where do you go? Where right? do you go? Yeah. And so I think part of what I'm trying to, the vibe I'm putting out to people is today, if you listen to the show and you're starting to have some awarenesses and recognitions of what are some of those habits, influences, and it's funny, Ted, you know what I always think about? You know when your parents frustrate you as a kid and you always say, well, I'm never going to do that when I'm a never, parent. Never, ever right? again. Right? And so... But how many of us say, when we recognize great things our parents do, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing when I become a mom and dad. Yeah, after a couple of years, you go, well, gee. Right? So, you know, final thought heading into the first break is we really have to understand what to look for. And when I come back, we're going to talk about what are some signals, what are some indications, what are some awarenesses that could fit some possible habits you have that reflect you pick those things up from your parents, and it could be detrimental to your ability to model behavior to your kids. I'm Mark Altman. This is the Mindset Go Radio Show. We'll be right back. Sorry, 